G'day, g'day, comrade subscribers. Uh, thanks everyone for sticking around. I've uh, just reached 3,000 subscribers last night. Actually, it's uh, 3,006 as we speak. So, um, yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, thanks for uh, liking my videos. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for occasionally disliking my videos. Keep me on my toes, etc., uh, etc. Et so, anyway, so this is um, this caught my eye. So this is another uh, Spectrum kind of keyboard case that was made at the time. I've got a, I've also shown a Fuller FDS, I think Fuller Desktop System FDS um, keyboard as well. So this one's by DKtronics. Um, being an Amstrad person, DKtronics to me means like light pen and speech synthesizer. Uh, that's what we had on our 464. So, um, but obviously they they produced a keyboard for the uh, for the Spectrum. Um, one interesting thing about these is that um, they usually come with a spectrum inside them so you can kind of get both for a pretty good price um, so that's that's one of the reasons why I got this is so I've got an extra spectrum I've only got one um, spectrum 48 so this will be my second but if we discount all the Soviet etc machines so that's pretty much it on the back here so I don't know why Oh, okay. Now I understand. Um, so yeah, so this is I think designed so if you've got a um, interface one or interface two, um, the spectrum sits on top. I'll, I'll get them out actually. So because you can see here, we've got two power points. This one here actually says network, and then we've got mic and ear above here. So that to me means um, I can't remember which one it is. Interface one or interface two. Uh, similar here we've got RS232 slash TV and here we've got TV so that's why we've got this extra row there and I guess we've got space for power maybe so you can maybe put the power brick inside we've got a little hole down here I guess that's for um, the micro drive cable yeah but other than that that's pretty much it um, so doesn't have any screws in it so it just lifts off so the screws are missing of course the important thing is how's the keyboard um, it's okay it's okay we'll have a closer look so as you can see that they're not custom keys they're just plain keys and then we've got some um, the spectrum stuff uh, stuck on as stickers so that's one way of doing it I guess um, it feels okay I guess I, I never grew up on the Spectrum rubber keyboard, so to me this this feels fine. Uh, might be an improvement. And you can see here we've got a number pad uh, that just basically reproduces. I don't know if you can, sorry, I got my light there. So seven, eight, nine. So it just reproduces the the keys over here. Um, we do have a delete key here, which is normally this one up here, isn't it? I think if you press symbol shift or something or I don't know cap shift anyway whatever yeah I think if you press cap shift and zero that's delete otherwise you get that key there so um yeah I, I guess it's possible that you could looking at the sizing of the keys you could maybe um design your own keyboard or use one of the ones that are available and um make a replacement using modern key switches and, and keycaps but this one feels okay we'll have a look inside right like I said there's no screw so it just lifts off and that's it so there's your specking uh, issue 4s here's your keyboard cable uh, looks to be broken but that's okay I can um, I can replace this maybe pin and socket put some sockets on here pins on here or put some pins on there and sockets on here um, that'll work well so um, I guess oh, we've got a, a reset switch here floating around so you can probably I don't know attach that on the back or something like that so yeah I'd probably yeah pull this apart give it a wash um, okay so no ULA on the specy that's fine we can, you can get replacement ULAs I probably have have some available um 
but yeah so let's let me get the interface one and two okay so it is the uh the interface one that's got the micro drive and the rs232 on the network connections on it so what you would do i guess is let me just remove the board just three screws holding it down so i guess well, let's plug it in so interface one goes in there and then what do we do we still screw it into the same place I'd say so. Okay, yep, so it looks like I did use those screws. It looks like I use these screws now. One, two. Screw through there, screw through there. All right, let's just put those two screws in just to hold it in place. And then, of course, we've got the, uh, the interface two, which has got the joysticks and the cartridge and the printer interface. That just plugs onto the back of the interface one. So let me just do this. Actually, I think that's probably why I got the fuller case because I saw that it actually had a ZX interface one still attached to it. But there we go. So we've attached the, the specy board to those front screws. And then we've got some standoffs there that the interface two sits on. And then I guess we just run our micro drive cable. Or does the micro drive go in there? I wonder what because it just doesn't look very long for a standard micro drive cable does it let me grab i think i've got one i think i've got one so yeah i think this is the standard cable so that would go into there i guess and i don't know maybe maybe you could get an extension cable or something that doesn't really fit like that let's um the top case back on and have a look that's a bit dodgy how's that supposed to work <laughs> that would really fit does it what does it go doesn't really fit you can see that you can see the lines uh, the, the holes line up so we've got our network there we've got our RS232 then we've got our TV and we've got our hang on mic and ear way back there and then we've got our power up there so just kind of the slope is interfering with that so unless ah oh, unless ah oh, maybe you had to take it out of the case as well maybe that's it Get the light out of the way yeah i think that was probably what you had to do you had to remove the um, interface one out and then it would fit is it worth me doing that just for the video just for yeah all right let me give it let me do that i've got the fuller case here as well just for comparison so this is the keyboard on the fuller feels a lot nicer actually we just compare it's about the same size so that's the fuller and that's the dk tronics so yeah mm, yeah maybe i think i like the fuller better anyway let's uh let's see if we can get this interface one to fit all right it's <laughs> turning into a interface one disassembly video more screws no actually i don't think i need to do those do i I don't think so. Ah, oh, it's just, I think it just pull, pulls out, doesn't it? I have been in here before. There was a trick because we've got this interface here that, ah, 
two more screws. I already removed about seven. Slightly different size, of course. Or is it just that they're worn? Okay, here we go. And that's a bit better. Right. <laughs> Just, all right. I will figure it out. You can see what I'm trying to do though. Yeah, all right. Right. I think that's the ULA for the interface one, is it? Because. Um, Charlie in New Zealand, V Retro, he makes a, um, a replacement for the interface one, I think. All right. So let's try this again. So that will plug onto the back of that. Oh, I really want to replace that <laughs> linear regulator. Get that heat sink out of the way. Okay. And then that sits. Oh, okay. So we've got screw holes there now as well. So I've got screw holes at the front. Right, and we've got some <laughs> screw hole. We've got a screw hole there. We've got at least one screw hole. So that should, I guess, hold everything in place. Let's give it a try. All right, I think we're ready now. So there we go. Bear interface one and a bear specky. Oops, sorry. Get that charging cable out of the way. Right, where's the case? Now pretend I've plugged the uh, pretend I plug the keyboard in. Let's see if this fits now. Ooh, yes. Now it fits. So now we've got. Yeah, that fits. How's that? So we've got still got our interface. We've got our network connection now. We've still got power there. We've got serial RS-232 and then we've got our tape recessed into there and then somehow I guess I guess there might have been some sort of um, extension cable for the micro drive but there we go cool okay now, I'm starting to think I like the fuller keyboard actually better thinking <laughs> redoing the keyboard with cherry um, let's say DSA key should fit uh, they won't fit on here these are a bit too big I think yeah you, I don't think you can directly let's have a look. I don't think you can directly replace them because I think that's just a little bit too big I think that's too big that pattern so that's all right that's probably about the size of a dsa key so you could um you could design a replacement keyboard for it maybe but um so what do you think should i keep the interface one in there i've got to get the specky working though um let's just put that back up there obviously i'm gonna to have to replace the ula um, obviously convert the comp the, um, the the RF modulated output to composite uh, definitely replace the linear regulator and um, sort out this keyboard connection yeah what do you think should I do should I do this should I keep the interface one in I've only got one <laughs> so um, it's either this one or the other specky that I'm working on all right, let's see. Don't know. Got to see if this one works anyway. There we go. DKtronics, whatever it was called. Hopefully that was interesting. Bye for now. Oh, I forgot to show you what the interface two looked like on the back of it. We can do that quickly. No harm. So that plugs into the interface one. So. There we go. So we can do our joysticks and our printer, joysticks and printer and cartridge. There we go. A bad little system. Bye for now.